Hello and welcome to Chandu.org. In this video, we are going to look at how to predict cricket score using Excel and machine learning. Don't think of this as a cricket related thing or anything. While I'm using cricket as a data set to explore some of the very powerful concepts of machine learning and how to implement them in Excel, you can take the same ideas and apply them uh, for many real life situations. All right. So let's get into this very interesting thing. A bit of background, as you probably know, I am originally from India, but I live in New Zealand. And both of these countries are great cricketing nations. They have a rich legacy of producing world class cricket players and, and, and whatnot. And right now, as I'm recording this video in the first week of July, uh, Cricket World Cup 2019 is going on. So that's why really I got all curious about how to do something fun and interesting with Excel cricket and uh, some of those advanced statistic concepts. Uh, and that's that's where this whole thing came up. Um, okay, so the the challenge here is uh, we, we will start with the prediction challenge. We will define a problem for us to solve and then we will use Excel and machine learning to solve them. So each side uh, in a typical one day international cricket match play for 50 overs, uh, each over consisting of six balls. Um, and, and the idea is after a certain team plays for maybe 10 overs or 15 overs, we would kind of get an idea of where things are heading, right? How they are progressing uh, and what are the match conditions and how much, uh, how everything is. And uh, given that state at that point, after a few hours of overs of play, we want to be able to predict the final score of that match. So how do we do this prediction? We will take a few inputs. We will figure out, uh, we, we will ask, you know, which country is it playing? Is it New Zealand, India, Australia, England, or, or uh, you know, any of those countries? And how many runs have been scored so far into the game? At that point in game, what is the score? How many wickets are lost? And uh, how many overs are remaining? Okay, it's a 50 over game. So if we do this at 15th over uh, we, uh, for an India versus Australia game, let's say Australia is batting. So we would say country is Australia. They have scored uh, 75 runs and they lost one wicket at the 15th over. So this is the kind of inputs that we give. That last would, one would be uh, 35 because 15 is done. Total overs are 50. So the balance would be 35. And then given these inputs, we would like to be able to predict the final score. What is the final score at the end of 50th over for that batting team? That's the challenge. So let's, uh, while, while this sounds like a typical any business challenge, right? You know, given, uh, given that the YTD sales are 7 million and, uh, uh, and we had 300 customers so far and, um, in, in, and we sold 75,000 product, uh, what would be the year end total kind of a thing um, we, we we can only solve these kind of problems if we actually define them in mathematics so let's uh, get mathematical what we want is we want to do a run prediction so predicted runs runs predicted rp uh, could be a function p uh, which takes these four inputs right it takes country runs scored wickets remaining and overs remaining that's my prediction function what it should do is it takes those four inputs, it should tell me that number, that's the function. If I can find such a function uh, that will give me this answer, then our job is done. That, so that's essentially what we are trying to do. Um, but let's uh, let's uh, let's halt here for a minute. We already know that runs predicted would be uh, runs scored plus something, right? Uh, so we, we have already scored 100 runs or 75 runs or whatever. So the total run would be 75 plus something or 100 plus something. So we don't need to predict everything. We, if you can predict that something alone, that's enough for us. We don't because this is uh, that would be some of these two. This is already known. That is the X or missing value. So if I can find that, that's that's good. So while this prediction function P is good, uh, it, it's not exactly what we want rather if I can write a function that will predict that something that will be good so this is where we can go and introduce some additional concepts because this is a cricket game we will use a familiar concept called run rate the idea of run rate is very simple 
how many runs are scored divided by how many overs are complete right that's the run rate uh, concept so we could say runs predicted is equal to runs scored plus overs remaining or times run rate remaining so this is that so this or orange or yellow colored bit this is what i need to predict because i already know run scored i already know how many overs are remaining uh, the only bit that i don't know is what would be the run rate in those remaining overs so if i can predict that that that's uh, that solves the problem again we will go and write a simple equation to define what run rate require run rate remaining would be r r r this could be a function f of country run rate already scored wickets remaining and overs remaining so uh, we can say you know hypothetically this is a function where it takes my country as input run rate scored what is the run rate already scored um or how many wickets are remaining in hand and how many overs are remaining um, let's say your your current ongoing run rate is 6 runs per over and uh, you have 8 wickets in hand and you have 10 overs remaining uh, because you have such an aggressive position right you you have so many more wickets and uh, and and uh, you you have few overs remaining you might go and bat a lot faster in the remaining overs so that's that's the intention here this is the function if i can calculate such a function then our problem is solved but how do we calculate this function what is this f we will come back to that in a minute but uh, what we are doing is we are taking country as an input to the function what if we define one run rate function per country because these are different countries right australia's run rate function could be different than england said that could be different from new zealand and india and pakistan and afghanistan so we could define a uh, fictional functions r r india is 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 a function that takes only three inputs but gives me the values for india uh, new zealand would take these three inputs and gives me the value for new zealand england australia and so on and so forth so we could imagine a set of functions not just one function each behaving differently depending on what country it is and and giving the results but what is this self so far we have been talking in in hypothetical terms and and concepts but really what is this self you know how do, it can be anything right it, it could be anything that's the whole point of machine learning right we we don't really know what that is we will go and learn and predict so we can start off with something very very simple in terms of um, statistical concepts is called regression we could write a a regression function a multiple regression that would take this form it will say run rate required is m1 times run rate scored plus m2 times wicket remaining plus m3 times overs remaining plus alpha this is called a simple multiple linear regression where you are taking multiple variables and writing them in a in a equation format like this this if you go back to school days you know this is like a simple y equal to mx plus c format of line or or a multi dimensional where y equal to m1x1 plus m2x2 plus m3x3 so on and so forth plus c so if i can calculate those m1s and m2s and m3s and alpha that would satisfy my my input data training data then that that's what we need so how do we calculate them these these bits are the missing bits right we already have those inputs we know what is the run rate scored how many wickets are remaining how many overs are remaining but we don't know what those things are fortunately excel has a function that can tell me what those values would be it is linest linear estimation function what it does is it takes a bunch of inputs and then it tries to fit them to for that output uh, and then calculates the best fitting m1 m2 m3 and alpha values so that's what we will use we will calculate that for each country but you might be thinking oh why stop with just one and one function per country why can't we have more functions per country if this sounds like you know chandu where are we going you know what's the point the idea is uh here we can we can have one equation or we can create a bunch of different equations for each country and then when it comes to the time of prediction we will average everything this is just like doing a survey in the crowd let's say the match is going on you go around the stadium and ask everyone hey what do you think the final score would be what do you think the final score would be what do you think the final score would be and you do this for 10 people 100 people 500 people 
everybody will give you a different number somebody will say oh this is going to be 300 runs this is going to be 275 this is going to be 493 uh, and at the end of the day what you would do is you take all these numbers you average them you come up with one number and then you say that's the prediction so rather than you doing a single prediction you are doing an average or an aggregation of all the predictions and then going with that value this kind of a modeling in machine learning world is called as ensemble modeling. The idea is you create an ensemble, a collection of different models, and then you uh, you take the aggregate of all those models when, when you are predicting an output. That could be total runs code or the sales for this year or temperature next month or rainfall next year or whatever. So the advantage of ensemble model is while they may seem quite naive and very very simplistic what they really do is they they are very powerful and they provide uh, very good results uh, on on large set of different problems so that's why people use them ensemble models they 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 try to mimic many real world scenarios just by the virtue of uh, divide and con conquer technique that is going on there <laughs> Okay, uh, let's not get into too many, too much of statistics because uh, for one, I'm quite uncomfortable whenever uh, I talk about statistics and the second thing is I'm also not the expert in this area. So uh, it's best for me to demonstrate my understanding and then, and then let's go and implement it in Excel and then you will understand why this really matters. So what, rather than doing one F per country, we can take our input data, we can randomly split this into... Um, subsets uh, when i say subset don't be confused we are not splitting first 10 rows here second 10 rows here not like that rather what we do is we take uh, all of these let's say we are doing the prediction for new zealand this is all the previous scores of new zealand so we we then uh, take a set of values from there put it in one set of data we go back and then we'll do another set but with replacement what this means is same number can appear on both sets so that's the with replacement so we create multiple subsets and for each set we create one model one one multiple regression model right and then we take all of those numbers all the regression models aggregate them uh, and then calculate the final prediction so this is how a typical ensemble model works rather than building one one function on the entire data we kind of uh, do a random uh, splitting and then doing the model on on those sets uh, to to train the train our multiple regression model the advantage of this is it will it will be more realistic it will create all sorts of possibilities into one bucket and and then it will give you a, a rich and diverse model how do we aggregate so there are different techniques here again uh, the simplest one would be we will run the prediction for each of the five models take all the five five numbers and then average them to come up with the final number that's a very very simple one uh, you can also assign weights or you can uh, do some other complicated things this basic approach where you are dividing and then building and then aggregating uh, this is uh, the whole concept uh, here would be called as bagging and bootstrapping so we we do the bootstrapping by selecting random sets of numbers uh, with replacement that's the bootstrapping and then we bag everything together uh, to come up with the final number this is uh, in, in a nutshell what ensemble modeling is there are other variations of the same concepts too uh, in in the description I have provided a link for full tutorial of this on my blog where I have provided additional resources on ensemble modeling and the statistics behind that so this is that all right now that we understand what is it that we are going to do let's go and start working on the data we need to get the data right because if I want to build a machine learning system uh, I need to not only build the machine but also the learning part the learning part can only happen if I have the data so this is where I wanted to go and get the previously happened matches because the, these countries have been playing cricket for hundreds of years so there's all this historical data so I wanted to go and get the l l recent 300 games and then uh, split it into two sets the first 250 games and the recent 50 games so the first 250 games are what we will use to train our model and then the last 50 games the latest 50 games are what we will use to test the model so when we are training we want to be able to tell our model 
Hey, at the 5-hour mark, New Zealand scored 30 runs without losing wicket and in that game, they ended up scoring 298. So like this, a sets of values we give the model, we will train that and then it will create some M1, M2, M3 values. And then we take those and apply that on the test data set to see how well we are able to fit that. Right? Uh, and if there is too much problem, then we will have to go back and uh, tweak our training setup. So that's the that's that. To get the data, there are different sources, but the best one that I found so far is cricksheet.org. What they do is they provide ball by ball score. So, because we need the score at at the interval by over, we we need uh, we need to have such level of detail, and that can only be done uh, when you have something like ball by ball or over by over, and that's where cricksheet comes in. I'll open their website. This is cricksheet.org. They got data for all types of games so, so you have your test matches multi-day matches one day internationals t20s and all other types of leagues etc uh, we will use the one day international thingy um, this default format that they provide is called as yaml it is a uh, it is a javascript object notation kind of a format uh, which is very hard to read in in excel or in power bi uh, fortunately, they they have also started offering uh, some experimental downloads, which are um, here is it. Uh, sorry, I think I see the full set of downloads. So they have started offering experimental downloads that include CSVs and XML files as well, not just YAML. If the YAML data is what you download, then you may need to use either Python or VBA or something else to first transform that into excel or power bi readable format and um, that gets too technical so i'm not going there but uh, fortunately there is csv format so right, that's what we will download uh, here is the um, csv downloads for all one day internationals for men 1416 games is what what they have we will only look at the latest 300 games right <laughs> So we will uh, we will uh, click on that. That will download. It's a bunch of CSV files, fourteen hundred sixteen CSV files to be precise. Uh, this is what we get. These are all the CSV files. Each game has one CSV. I'll open one of these games. Uh, I think uh, that's one two two five two five zero. Uh, it's here. This is how the format looks. Uh, there is some header information about the overall game, like what is the teams. England versus Sri Lanka. It's male uh, men's game. It's played in 2006 season. That's the exact date. Um, it's called Nat West Series. Match number one. They were playing at Lord's Stadium in London. Uh, England won the toss and choose to field. Uh, that's the player of the match and who are the umpires and match referee and winner is Sri Lanka. Uh, win one by 20 runs. And this is the actual part of the game. Each ball, first ball of the over. Um, Jai Surya and uh, Tha Tharanga were playing and then this kind of goes on. Uh, if there was a loss of wicket at any point, that was also mentioned here. Right. So this is going on for 1400 files, each file having uh, the d data for both teams. So 100 overs, assuming the game goes on full uh, and each, each over, each, each innings would have 300 balls. So 600 rows of data at least. There will be some extra balls like 3.7, 3.8 because there's whites or whatever. Um, so th this is this is how it is, right? So what we need is we need to first get everything together and then aggregate it at over level, not just ball level, but move it to over level and then uh, and then um, and then find out what is the cumulative score at the end of the over, cumulative number of wickets at the end of over, and then uh, feed that to our learning model. This is all very, um, it might sound quite, quite laborious, but thanks to Power Query, uh, you can uh, very quickly get there. So that's what I did. I used Power Query and some Excel formulas to clean this data and transform it into the format that we need. So now we will get into Excel where uh, we, will, we will look at the data. So this is how finally I was able to get the data into this format. Uh, source name is kind of I kept it there so that we could look back into the CSV file if there is a, an audit question or we need to make sure everything is all right. 
and then we are looking at country what is the country uh, and uh, I didn't bother keeping the data at individual over level I only went and kept the data at the every fifth over tenth over fifteenth over so every five over mark because nothing much really happens between over to over I mean things do happen but uh, the um, it, it's enough if I look at the trend as such 5 10 15 20 to do the prediction this way we can also cut down the number of data points so how many runs were there how many wickets were there within that over but then this is what really matters cumulative overs and cumulative wickets so for example this game 103271.csv uh, Afghanistan innings was going from um, like that they were 11 runs at 5 overs and then 275 runs at um, at the end of the innings in 48th over they finished the game in 48th over and they lost one wicket two three four like that that's the maximum over so once these things are there uh, I have also assigned a unique match ID so that we could uh, filter down to the latest 300 or or whatever and all of that is done through power query so there is uh, in this section the data that is coming is only up to 300 it's not going beyond that okay and then I wrote some formulas to calculate run rate uh, and then overs remaining these are very very simple formulas you could see cumulative runs divided by over number and maximum over minus over uh, 10 minus wickets because there are 10 wickets uh, and, uh, and then I've calculated few other bits and pieces here uh, including score at the end and then run rate remaining um, so if they were scoring 275 and they scored um, 11 runs in the first five overs losing one wicket uh, their run rate so far is only 2.2 that means they have scored at 6.1395 in the remaining overs right there will be some div zeros because uh, at the very last over there is nothing left to score so that means they have scored zero runs in the zero overs and that's the div zero and then i have assigned a unique data point number for each data point because when i'm randomly sampling the data to do the model uh, we we need that number and the data point number doesn't change wherever there is a div zero or if the value is in the last over or if the o match id is greater than 50 that uh, sorry less than 50 this means um, what it would do is it will it will ignore the data points uh, that belong to the latest 50 games so that they will not be fed to the model they will be only used for training purpose okay uh, it might seem a little too technical but uh, again the idea here is not to get into too much of formula stuff but rather just focus on the high level bits so once this is done then I started creating ensemble models so this is how it would go uh, we we first uh, go and do the random data point picking so for each country I wanted to create 10 models and each model will have 50 data points those 50 data points will be randomly picked from our our data set and and then placed here those data points obviously belong to only that country uh, and there are 16 countries so 16 countries each country would have 10 models each model will have 500 data point 50 data points so a total of 8000 lines so that's what we get here 8000 0 to 7999 and for each country uh, I've calculated how, how many is the size how many data points they have and then uh, put a bag number there will be 10 bags uh, because 10 models and then for each data point we will generate random data point bring the corresponding row like for example here row number 7 was polled twice in the model 1 which is the intention of with replacement models anyway uh, and then we will calculate all of these values including RRR so then I created actually not one but two different regression models uh, in this video I will only explain one but you are welcome to study download this file and, and look at the model number one as well so this is my model two the idea is we take these inputs uh, and uh, sorry we, we we take the um, we take the inputs from bag one 
all the model points so run rate run rate scored overs remaining wickets remaining and run rate remaining so given these three that's what happened given these three that's what happened so then what we do is we we take all the bag one items those 50 items those 50 50 rows here and we create a linear estimation model i'll just show you how that would look here uh, we need three i'll insert a row here so linus and then what we want is known wise known wise are these these and then we will we will do it for 50 so that's 20 rows that's 53 so you could stop here 50 first 50 rows p9 to p p58 known x's are these these three right and then whether you need a constant or not uh, I tr tried with constant before uh, as well. Uh, I found that with constant the, the model was not very good. So I removed the constant. Uh, but you can uh, leave it to false or true. And then uh, when you press control shift enter, you will get the M1, M2, M3 values. Right. So this is what the model is saying. There should be the last parameter is zero because there is no constant. And this is what it is saying. So these are my input variables. I'll place them here. You can see what it means. It means um, the the way Linus works is it will it will reverse the order. This is my original order of inputs. The multipliers are in the reverse order. So that's wicket remaining, that's overs remaining, and that's run rate scored. So for Afghanistan, as per model one, what this is telling is. Uh, their remaining run rate tends to be 1.54 times, one and a half times of what is they have already scored, plus 0 0.002. So maybe very little impact on how many overs are remaining, but a negative impact based on wickets remaining. So if they have too many wickets remaining, their run rate tends to go down. Maybe they get too aggressive and then hence they lose the wickets or whatever, right? So this is this is what the model is saying, right? So this is the actual multiplier. So you can also do the uh, linest. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'm too lazy, so I'll just copy that linest. Oops, that's the same formula, uh, but we can see the R square. R square will tell me how well the fit is. Um, this would be third row and first column of the model. Um, Oops, uh, I need to give the last parameter as true. And it is saying 89, 89%, 90%. Uh, so this means that model actually fits pretty well with this data, right? You should not just look at R square. There are other statistics as well, F statistic too, that, uh, that we should look, um, which would be I don't know. I think it's four one or five one or something like that. Uh, yeah, probably that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> which parameter it is, but the F statistic will also give us some information about uh, what is the F number, and then we need to look into F distribution uh, with the degrees of freedom to find out what is the probability of that number occurring and if that probability is too low that really means that um, these variables are not random i mean the, the the impact of these variables is not random it, they do have a say in that output so that's what the f statistics will tell us again um, most of this you will only be able to appreciate and use if you have uh, some understanding of how to build such models. So this is what I did. I created uh, those 10 models because we, we I've only done it for one, but if I have to do it uh, for 16 countries times 10, so 160 models, uh, doing in this kind of a manual sense is not so fun. So instead what I did is I, I wrote some very intelligent and uh, fun array formulas here uh, that use index and um, index formulas to dynamically feed the values to linest and, and generate the multipliers c is always zero so that's my formula here 
reverse order of the variables and then the r square is also shown so you could see the r square is fairly high uh, it's consistently around 80 to 95 percent which indicates the model is is a really good fit uh, uh, except in some cases where uh, there is there is very low values but that's where the ensemble model works beautifully because it does bring in that kind of a variation of everything uh, to to mimic many real life scenarios so once these are built we then have to go and test it right obviously the whole point of this is so that we could do the prediction so we have tried it our ensemble model on on the previous 250 matches so let's go and test this uh, this is what i did i tested by loading all the data where match went on for 50 hours there is no point predicting for 50th hour when the match was finished in 43rd or 29th hour uh, either due to low score or rhyme getting in the way or whatever so these are the games uh, in the test data set that have play go went on for 50 hours and there were 50 such innings uh, and that's the country that's the score at the end so then what i did is i created this kind of a setup where we can we can in input the data as of 10th over you can scroll this uh, to change it to 15th over or whatever uh, so at the 10th over in that particular game for example the game 1022369.csv in sri lanka um, they had nine overs nine wickets remaining they have scored 40 they have 40 overs remaining and their run rate so far was 4.9 that is 49 runs is what they scored right given these what would be the run rate remaining as per as per this uh, it's 5.74 because that's what my uh, prediction model tells me right the, so the prediction says it's 278 runs that's how many they will score the actual happens to be 217 so that means there is an error of 61 runs which is 28 percent so then i calculated uh, the error as well as you could see the errors are there but some values are incredibly close like you know 0.86 runs this is really pretty good estimate of what happened in that game for example this one um is it uh, bangladesh which has scored 309 runs so if they scored 5.6 runs per hour at the end of 10 overs with nine wickets remaining their prediction would be 6.35 they will continue scoring at 6.35 runs per hour uh, and leading up to 309 runs the actual was 309 so that's pretty good so i calculated the error and then i also measured uh, uh, standard deviation and average error as well and then i also calculated accuracy which is if it is within plus or minus 10 percent of runs i thought that's a good good calculation uh, so i calculated accuracy which is 43 percent obviously if only 10 percent of uh, 10 overs are complete that means only 20 percent of the game is complete so there is a huge scope of things going either way at that point but as you drag this further you will see that the accuracy improves because the more we know the better we can predict so for example at the 35th over my accuracy will be will be 76 percent we will be pretty bang on for most games uh, at the 40th over uh, our accuracy goes all the way up to 86 percent and our average error is only 15 runs so whatever model says uh, the final outcome would be within 15 runs of that um, and again um, as, as you see some of the errors do get quite big at that point because uh, this is when miracles happen in sport right uh, usually as as we tend inch closer towards the end of the game all sorts of things can go wrong like you know heroic actions as well as some some stupid performances too so then i i created some graphs to show how this would look um, for both models as i said there were two different models so this is my second model that's what we are looking at now uh, this is the actual score that the predicted score and that line indicates parity so every dot should be within on that line if the accuracy is 100 percent but we are fairly close except some games where it is this i've also done one for the recently concluded india versus bangladesh game on 2nd of july this is what really happened in the game and at each point our model predicted that the runs will be 293 405 so on and so forth all the way at 45th hour it predicted that you would score 315 
and the actual happened to be 314 so uh, this is what the prediction is that's what actually happened as you could see the prediction kind of varies quite a bit um, depending on the batting conditions at that point of time uh, but it does inch closer to the actual reality uh, as the game progresses so that's the that's the cricket score prediction um, I've also finally built a predictor tool. The whole point of this is so you could give some input. So, for example, if you say, um, I don't know, let's go with New Zealand. If New Zealand were to score 65 runs in the first 10 overs without losing a wicket, they they would end up scoring 362. That's what my model 2 tells me. Model 1 is slightly conservative, so it does tell me 308. And the, this is what... Uh, the predictor tool does it it uses those inputs uh, and then feeds them into the 10 and symbol models and calculates the output predictions and then averages them uh, to come up with, with those numbers so that's uh, how you can build a prediction tool in excel that uses machine learning and and symbol modeling uh, and as you as you have more data you would you would update this data worksheet and rerun the models so that they can calculate uh, new values and then they can get trained better and better so th that that's the basic approach uh, let's uh, look at some closing remarks obviously you know the whole concept is very easy to implement thanks to powerful functions like linest as well as concepts like array formulas and power query for cleaning data and and putting everything together and and using random variables because they're they're random every time you do something with the spreadsheet new numbers will be fetched new models will be constructed so one approach that i normally do with such complex models is i i turn off auto calculation of formulas to ma set them to manual that way the random number is not changing all the time and uh, every time i have uh, significant data changes i then rerun uh, so that new set of leanest values can be calculated the the advantage of that would be your spreadsheet will be quick it doesn't change often uh, but the disadvantage is uh, it's not dynamic so you need to be mindful that these formulas are not doing going all the time so that's easy to implement uh, and the second one is whenever you are building something like this it's important that you know the business rules you know you understand the concept of how the final outcome is impacted by those inputs right so you might be thinking hey Chindu, this is good but what if there are other parameters that are impacting the final score for example we are only looking at uh, the country that is playing we are saying if it is New Zealand this is how much they will be but what if New Zealand is playing against Australia what if New Zealand is playing against England you know doesn't the opposing team have some say in the final score obviously yes but we haven't bothered implementing all those combinations because that would mean so many more inputs and so much uh, so much more learning to be done for our model to be good likewise doesn't the playing ground and the weather and the conditions also have an impact like for example what if it's a hot day what if it's a rainy day or what if it has rained uh, for several weeks before the start of the match you know how does that impact what if it's a day night match versus a day match what if you are uh, setting the target versus chasing the target you know all of those will play a role in uh, the final score so when you when you are implementing this you need to know the business rules but that's the first thing the second thing is you also need to be able to say uh, we are only going to consider this set of inputs not everything uh, when building the model the advantage of that would be your model will be reasonably concise you will not over engineer it um, but you will still be able to achieve some sort of outputs that are meaningful so you need to take a balanced approach when when you are when you're building these things and the final thing is pinch of salt this is really important whenever you are building anything predictive either in excel python or whatever may be the tool whatever the final outcome that the tool is saying you should always take it with a pinch or maybe a bucket of salt uh, you have seen that with with the test test um, test setup as well as uh, real life predictions the model does vary quite a bit um, this is not the fault some fault of the model even if you give more inputs to it and more variations and build a even more complex model chances are you will never hit the prediction 
because you're trying to see what could happen in real life and that is never possible so you should take it with a pinch of salt you should add some footnotes and and, and mention that you know this is only with uh, this kind of uh, uh, possibility or or there is an error of plus or minus 75 runs to this prediction or whatever so that's that i hope you found this video uh, insightful and useful and i if you are embarking on machine learning journey i wish you all the best and uh, do not ignore excel just because you are moving on to these uh, supposedly greener pastures many of the classical machine learning techniques can be very easily implemented in excel so i encourage you to try them out in excel before uh, trying to learn some some language or some other tool uh, to do these things so with that i'll i say thank you thank you so much for watching if you like this give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends thanks bye